Keeping in shape is essential to the Marine Corps detachment aboard ship, which provides police and security support. Providing 24-hour entertainment is the job of the five-channel television station. Everyone is kept up to date by the Eagle and kept jamming by KVSN Radio. Coming at you with some blues, this is the Jeff Healy Band. The Battlestar is so self-sufficient, at one time this summer it stayed at sea for three months. The fuel tanks hold three and a half million gallons, but not a bit of it is used by the carrier, it's all for the aircraft. The carrier itself is powered by nuclear reactors, which only need to be fueled every 15 years. The Navy claims the reactor spaces are some of the safest places on the ship. They say they have not had an accident in the 35-year history of naval nuclear power. The captain of the Carl Vinson feels the role of his carrier is far bigger than the four and a half acre flight deck. We have an increasingly important role to play in a troubled world. Uh, aircraft carriers, the Navy battle groups are the uh, military forces of choice. And we can operate a substantial military force in international waters at sea and do so in most parts of the world without anyone's permission or approval or cooperation. When the Carl Vinson and its battle group headed into the region of the Persian Gulf this summer, Iran and Iraq were at war and beginning to involve other countries. I'm convinced that our presence there and those of, their, of our battle groups that were there before provided tremendous stability in that area and, and precluded that war from going high order. The um, battle group has the ability to control the oceans in which it's operating. In addition, really projects some pretty awesome power ashore. They'd uh, come out outside, uh, get feet wet, as we call it, over the water, and uh, as soon as they uh, picked us up on their radar coming out after them, they'd turn around and beat feet. Now, as this carrier and its entourage head for home, all is peaceful in the Persian Gulf, yet other American battle groups cover the world's oceans, hoping their presence alone will keep their guns of war silent. But the Navy has a few other guns they'd like to exhibit for all these land-loving tigers. It's time for the Naval Air Power Exhibition. Pilots are first briefed on the day's firepower demonstration. The Sluggo joining up with Lizard and Muff. Commander Muhlenberg will start off the air show with a bang, breaking the sound barrier just 200 feet over the carrier. And outside, you get the sonic boom, but inside, looking at airspeed indicators is the only indication, uh, really, that you have it. The altimeter winds around a bit. Now that got the crowd's attention. Time to show off how the world's top-rated planes operate in the air. The F-14 Sidewinder missile is one of the most accurate weapons in today's arsenal. I've only seen that in the movies and it, I saw it in real life. To find a plane with a bigger bomb load than the intruder, you need a B-52. The demonstration serves to test the efficiency of naval weapons, as well as to entertain the relatives aboard for Tiger Cruise 88. Tiger Bill Gurin was one of about 200 men who escaped the sinking of the battleship Arizona in Pearl Harbor. If we could have just had one mighty ship like this, we could have shortened that war in less than a year. Without the sacrifice of all American servicemen, freedom would be but a dream. The hardest part of being in the military, but especially the Navy, because we deploy for long periods of time, is the family separation, at least for those of us that are married and have children. We left in June. My daughter was born in October, and I'm going to see her now for the first time. Rich knows California is getting close when he sees the vice admiral fly aboard to welcome the battle group back home. Then, with a bit of fanfare and nostalgia, all nine squadrons man their planes for the last time on this cruise. They're off to their home bases in San Diego, Lemoore, and Whidbey Island. The aircraft carrier becomes light and quiet until the squadron streaks overhead in a final salute. Now, Hawaii lay more than 2,000 miles behind. Ahead, the welcome sight of the Golden Gate Bridge. The greetings came from every imaginable direction. Ready, 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 ready. 
This city calls the Carl Vinson San Francisco's own, and she never looked so good. Emotions peaked at an all-time high as Battlestar approached her pier next door to the Big E. Loved ones held greetings aloft, hoping to catch the eye of their favorite serviceman. After six long months, some almost jumped off ship to get to their families. They traveled the equivalent of one and a half times around the world, stopped at numerous foreign ports, and now these men were finally home. More than 50 came back to babies they have never seen before. We waited five months for this. She was born in July, and here she is. Well, it's been a long time of waiting, let me tell you. I'm so excited. The first time I've seen my kid and since he's been born, he's been three months old now. I'm so excited. You don't know how it feels until you have someone come in like this. The planes are all gone and the men are headed for home, but before too long, the battle star Carl Vinson will be united with its crew and with its aircraft to sail again into foreign waters to make sure America keeps the respect it has from friends and foes alike. Reporting from aboard the USS Carl Vinson in San Francisco, I'm Mike Victor for Veterans Only.